have heard the tale of an unlikely friendship between a young witch and a lost demon. But there is a secret chapter hidden in its pages that remains untold. This is a story of two young witches who are joined by a powerful bond. From this time forth, it must forever remain a secret, never to be repeated. Forest? Huh? Cheshire? Where are you, Cheshire? Within a strange void, Ceresa had been petrified by a mysterious force. And as for Cheshire, he was nowhere to be seen. Could this too have been the work of the fairies? Oh no. I figured she could handle that forest without my help. But this power is unlike anything I've ever felt before. It goes against all Umbran teachings. But I have no choice. For years, this young girl had protected Ceresa, always being sure to watch over her from afar. Her name was Jeanne, and she too was an Umbra witch, just beginning her training. Unlike Ceresa, Jeanne lived in the Umbra witch village. Though forbidden, she often snuck out to meet her rival. The two never missed a chance to compare strength. Jean had been warned about the risks of soul projection, but that stayed her hand nary a moment. For she aspired to surpass Ceresa and become the strongest of all the Umbra witches, a goal that allowed no room for cowardice. I swear, the girl likes to keep me busy. Jean's technique split her soul from her body. She flew towards Avalon Forest.
I'm sure of it now. Something is afoot in this forest. And it's not just the fairies. So, Razor, where are you? Jean had successfully arrived in Avalon. The forest air was tinged with a vile presence. The Elder would really give me an earful if she knew I was here. Whatever. I'm used to her lectures. Cereza, where are you? That girl. Always getting herself into trouble. What is that? As Jean proceeded through the woods, she noticed something peculiar. Is that... Cereza's stuffed cat? She must be in trouble. I knew it! Uh, uh, as I thought, this is no fairy magic. Who are you? Cheshire's voice alarmed John. <gasps> Who's there? Show yourself! Don't play dumb. You trapped me in here, didn't you? Cheshire said as he struggled to break free. But it took all his strength just to keep from being swallowed. He could barely move an inch. You're... a demon? What are you doing there? Where's Cereza? Cereza? How do you know the girl? Eyes narrowed. Cheshire studied John with new interest. I'm an Umbra witch, apprentice. Jean, I've come to save Cereza. What have you done with her? Get out here and explain yourself! Oh, like I know where that brat is! Cheshire said, trying unsuccessfully to hide the desperation in his voice. Wait, a demon? Here? Did Cereza summon you? Jean knew Cereza well. Seeing the demon-possessed stuffed cat, she instantly grasped the situation. She thought for a moment, then had a truly devilish idea. I have a proposition for you, demon. I'll get you unstuck. But in return, you help me find Cereza. Find Cereza? The demon eyed John suspiciously. That's the deal. If you say you'll help me, I'll move you to a body in a less precarious position. I have just the thing. Jean produced a stuffed animal of her own. A handsome red stuffed cat. Compared to Cheshire's tattered felt, its velvet fur had a rich sheen. Nevertheless, like I trust a human, you're all the same. You won't trick me! Cheshire barked at Jean. Fine by me. Best of luck then. Jean turned her back on the prideful demon and prepared to set off on her own. What? Cheshire yelled unable to conceal his distress. And with good reason, in a moment he would be sucked into that void for good. More right, let me into that blasted cat. But if this is a trick, your lunch. The demon reluctantly agreed to Jean's plan. <laughs> Very well, demon. Now. Into the vessel you go! <laughs> to think this would come in handy here. Demon, speak your name. I don't have one. 
The demon showed his gratitude the only way he knew how. An angry roar. I see. Then I shall call you Charles. Charles? Perhaps the demon had grown more attached to the name Cheshire than he cared to admit. <laughs> What's the fuss? Any name will do, right? Off we go now, Charles. We've no time to waste. It's Razor? It's faint, but I can sense her magic. And she's not alone. Something put John's nerves on edge. This presence belonged to no fairy. Look! Over there! Charles had spotted something. Jeanne followed Charles' gaze. She could see a small figure floating in the distance. It was Ceresa. She was unnaturally still, frozen by some unknown power. Jean looked at Ceresa's face. It was as pale as ice. Ceresa! <laughs> so close. Whoever was behind this was determined to keep the girls apart. Charles bared his fangs and began to growl. The source of Jean's unease appeared before them now. He was suspended in the air, like a fell spectre. Fixed by his gaze, neither dared to so much as breathe. You're the one who was speaking to me before. Who are you? So we meet again, my brave friend. Or perhaps introductions are in order. Yes, you may call me he who affirms all phenomena. My, that's quite a mouthful. You're worse than no name over there. No matter. Anyone crossing the Umbra will pay! Ark Eve Origin. To think that her continued defiance would bring me to this place. A slight miscalculation. But she will be mine soon, nonetheless. And then I will affirm my world. As he spoke, the Spectre's eyes grew crazed. They smoldered with a dark energy. But John and Charles did not back down. What? Absolute poppycock. I won't let you lay a finger on my umbrella sister. Return, Ceresa, or prepare to feel the wrath of the umbra. What's the matter? Don't tell me you're giving up already. He probably tastes horrible. I better swallow him in one gulp. The demon was already licking his chops. But the spectre was unfazed. As he got to his feet, 
A faint smile crossed his lips. You still don't understand, do you, Jean? What will happen if you oppose me? How? How do you know my name? I will show you, Jean. Give you a glimpse of what will happen if you continue along your current path. Jean and Charles found they were unable to move. The specter had them in his spell. A moment later, a torrent of horrible visions began to flood into Jean's mind. It was a vision of Jean as a grown woman, dealt a fatal blow by an unknown assailant. Stop these stupid tricks! I'll rip you apart! Charles tried with all his might, but he could not move. Jean, I have shown you visions for things to come. If you do not distance yourself from it, that future will certainly find you. But this fate is not yet determined. Leave now, and it may yet be avoided. The spectre rose once again. Suspended midair, he looked down on them with his piercing gaze. He slowly turned to face Ceresa. Ark, leave, Origin. You cannot resist much longer. Soon you will give me that which I desire. Then, finally, phenomenal affirmation will be realized. A finger on my unbred sister! Jean stood tall in defiance. Perhaps I was too soft. Witness your cruel fate once more. Quake made a promise to me she has yet to fulfill. You can't have her! The beast gave a fierce roar. Jean, you have seen what awaits you. Yet still, you would face me. I won't run away. I am going to be the strongest witch of all! I will achieve phenomenal affirmation. The tool of the ultimate that is a statistical impossibility. The spectre's right hand began to glow with an icy glimmer. And when those pleas go unanswered, that is when you witness true despair. No! No! Let go of him! 
Charles screamed out in agony. The spectral flames were slowly eating through his body, tearing him apart. After I'm finished with him, you're next. I tried to warn you not to get involved. It's a pity you will not listen. Flooded with a light as bright as the sun. For a moment, everything around them seemed to dissolve in the radiant glow. What? What is happening? Could she have awakened? Her blood-curdling scream seemed to shatter the air itself. This is a John, you have made your choice. That fate is now immutable. I will not fear my fate. Whatever may come, I will stand and face it! His power extinguished, the specter's body flickered, then faded away. As if in response, cracks and fissures burst all around them, and the world began to crumble. It's all falling apart. Was this all just his illusion? Cereza! The color had begun to return to Ceresa's cheeks. She was not yet awake, but from the faint smile on her face, she appeared to be having a pleasant dream. I 
think she'll be all right. They will be able to return to the forest. And it looks like my time is almost up. Jeanne's body had grown faint. Her technique had reached its limit. Her traveling soul yearned to return to her body. Well, Charles, which will it be? Which? What do you mean, which? Charles returned with a puzzled look. I'm asking, will you go back to that tattered doll, or shall I send you home to Inferno? Charles blinked incredulously. Home to Inferno? This was something unexpected. Did Jean have such a power? For a moment, Charles simply stared at Jean, saying nothing. Finally, he spoke. You think I'd trust you with that? Just keep it simple and put me back where you found me. I see. Have it your way. But come on, you must like that body. Better than the lump of scraps Cereza drags around. Hmm. <clears throat> I hate them both the same. Charles grumbled in his usual. Besides, you're too rough for my taste. At least the pipsqueak gives me a break once in a while. <laughs> That's so. Seeing through his act, Jean smiled at the flustered demon. She used her umbran arts to grant his wish and returned him to his former body. Cheshire, there you are. I'm gone for a minute and you get yourself lost again. With a peaceful expression on her face, she gave Cheshire a big squeeze. Cheshire sighed and furrowed his brow, but somewhere deep down, he was relieved. Farewell, Charles! No, Cheshire! Don't you dare tell Cereza what happened here. I mean it. I don't take orders from humans. But you saved me back there. I suppose I can make an exception this once. Cheshire added softly. If I didn't know better, I swear I was talking to a human. Take care of my friend, Furball. Whatever lies ahead, I'll be ready. I'm going to be the strongest witch of all. Thus concludes the adventure of Jean and Charles. We have seen how Ceresa and Cheshire's journey went from here. But what of Jean? What happened to her after learning of her fate? It may not be possible to change one's destiny. However, Jean's indomitable spirit and steadfast resolve will surely guide her down a true path.
Let us wish her success in her journey and put this chapter away in a safe 